A mysterious respiratory illness shows up in our city and starts spreading through our hospitals, killing one out of every 10 people it infects. We soon realize that we're not alone. The same thing is happening in other cities around the world. Now here in Toronto, a colleague of mine, another infectious disease physician, gets sick with the illness. And since we're both in the same line of work, I start imagining scenarios where I'm getting infected. We learn that the outbreak likely started in an animal market in China and is caused by a virus the world has never seen before and has no immunity to. Under a microscope, it looks a bit like the sun. So it's called a coronavirus. Now, this isn't the story of COVID-19. This happened 18 years ago. It's the story of the first novel coronavirus outbreak, SARS, which spread to dozens of countries around the world. Now, thankfully, my colleagues survived, but other healthcare workers died on the front lines. The world had never seen anything like this before, but it was clear this wouldn't be the last time. The clock to the next outbreak was already ticking, and we weren't prepared. And after watching this virus cripple our city, I knew that preparing for the next outbreak or the next pandemic, that this would be the most important work I would do in my lifetime. And when you're trying to confront something as big as a pandemic, it's pretty easy to feel small. Now, I'm sure you felt this way at some point in your life. There's a problem you see in the world, and it needs a solution. But it's big. But it's hard to know where to begin, and hard to know if your efforts will make a difference. But it's also important to remember that every pandemic in history started with just one person. Now, there's a passage in the Talmud that has always resonated with me as a physician. It says, whoever saves a single life it is considered as if they have saved the entire world. And the lesson is that when we touch one person's life, we have no idea what they might then bring to the rest of the world. And what it reveals is that our actions, however small and insignificant they may seem in the moment, can create a series of ripples that ultimately reach and impact all of humanity. And it's a powerful idea that inspired me to take that first step. So I spent the next 10 years studying outbreaks and how they spread. In doing so, I analyzed billions of data points on the world's air travel, which is comprised of this vast network of arteries that binds the global community together. It was fascinating research because it was a bit like studying the anatomy and physiology of a global organism. Now, within this network, we've learned that outbreaks spread incredibly fast and that if we want to stay a step ahead, we're going to have to move even faster. So as a physician and a scientist, I took a complete leap of faith and founded a company called Blue Dot to translate the discoveries from my research into digital technologies that could literally spread knowledge around the world faster than any outbreak. And for the past seven years, Blue Dot's eclectic team of doctors and scientists and engineers, we've been building a global early warning system for outbreaks. Now, this system uses artificial intelligence to detect murmurs of emerging outbreaks across the planet by reading and sorting through vast amounts of online data in 65 different languages. And it does this every 15 minutes, 24 hours a day. It then connects each outbreak we detect with data on the world's travel patterns so we can anticipate how these outbreaks will spread. This system generates the intelligence we need to mobilize timely, effective, and better coordinated responses to outbreaks. So let's fast forward to the morning of December 31st, 2019. Now, as most of us were preparing to ring in the new decade, our system pushed out an alert of an unusual cluster of pneumonia cases in a city called Wuhan in China. A few seconds later, it identified the cities that we should be looking to next. Bangkok and Tokyo were at the top of that list. 
And because our team was particularly concerned about this event, we then published the first peer-reviewed scientific study on this outbreak in early January so we could share our findings with the world. Now, a few days later, the first case outside of China is reported in Bangkok. And three days later, the second case is reported in Tokyo. Now, at this moment, my heart sinks because in order for cases to show up in these cities, this means that the outbreak in Wuhan has to be much larger than the official reports suggest. And then we learn that the outbreak is caused by a coronavirus that the world has never seen before and has no immunity to. Now, as the outbreak continues to spread, I'm increasingly concerned that it's just a matter of time before this virus shows up in our city. And it's a bit of a surreal time because I'm seeing people go about their daily lives blissfully, unaware of the disruption that is coming. Now, a few days later, after our kids are in bed, my wife and I go over my life insurance policies and my will because I would soon be working at the hospital treating patients with infectious diseases. And this angst that I felt 18 years earlier, deep in the pit of my stomach during the SARS outbreak, that feeling was now back. So here we are in the midst of the worst pandemic in 100 years. And today, we all understand just how interconnected our world is. But I'm not sure we fully appreciate just how interdependent our world is. Now, there's an aphorism you've likely heard. Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Do you remember the Zika outbreak a few years ago? Or the Ebola outbreak a few years before that? or the H1N1 flu pandemic a few years before that. In just the past 10 years, the World Health Organization has declared six outbreaks to be global public health emergencies. Now, that's an average of one global emergency every 20 months, which means if we continue on our current path, there's a good chance we will find ourselves in another dangerous outbreak during this pandemic, or shortly thereafter. So what do so many of these outbreaks have in common? They started when viruses normally found in animals made the leap over to humans. We're stuck in a cycle. And Mother Nature's trying to tell us something. She's trying to tell us that our health our security, our prosperity, these things that we value are deeply intertwined with the health of other living systems across our planet. When we industrialize agriculture and consume billions of livestock every year, we're creating sparks that could ignite the next dangerous outbreak or the next pandemic. When we consume wild animals, or when our actions or our inactions lead to the disruption of wildlife ecosystems, we're opening up a Pandora's box of viruses that could be far worse than COVID-19. Now, our memory of these past outbreaks faded quickly. But this time, Mother Nature has hit the pause button for all of us. She's forcing us to reflect and encouraging us to interact more gracefully with our planet. Now, getting ahead of outbreaks has been my life's work, but I know that it's not enough. The amazing people I work with at Blue Dot can tell the world that a storm is coming and can help to safely navigate through it. But we can't prevent that storm from happening. That task belongs to you. Now, I know it's easy to feel small and to be overwhelmed by the sheer scale of this problem. But remember that every pandemic 
starts with just one person. And know that there are things you can do every day to help keep us out of the next pandemic. In our household, we put this into practice every time we sit down and have a meal together. Before we eat, we say, itadakimasu. It's a phrase I first heard in Japan, and it literally translates to, I humbly accept. And we've used it as an opportunity to be more mindful of how something as simple as the foods we choose to eat can have far-reaching impacts across the globe. Eighteen years ago, I watched a tiny virus humble an entire city. And that moment was my calling. Today, a tiny virus has humbled the entire planet. And this moment might be your calling. COVID-19 has captured the attention of every government, every business, and every person on the planet, which is pretty remarkable that we're all focused on this one thing. So we've got a rare opportunity to help the world break free of this destructive cycle that we're currently in, and to create a world that is better than the one we had before the pandemic. Remember, whoever saves a single life, it is considered as if they have saved the entire world. Those words inspired me to take my first step. I hope they will inspire you to take yours.